Good morning, all. Hi, Casey here. It is Friday morning, June 2nd, a new month. Um, uh, and a heads up, this is a live broadcast. If you do not enjoy um, live broadcast, you might want to move on to something else. And um, if you are not seeing this between 11 a.m., and about 12 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time on June the 2nd, it is not live. But I do, I do see comments as they come in afterwards. Um, thank you all so much. Excuse my voice. I am still getting over whatever thing I kind of picked up on the cruise. It started just a, a little over a week ago. And, but I'm, I'm enjoying some Sudafed right now to make things a little bit more agreeable. And good morning, everyone. Uh, I am going to try to stay more on focus um, today, and then we'll respond to comments as I can. And of course, super chats get pinned to the top, so that's easier for me to follow up on. A um, couple of topics for today. And this is coming a, a lot of times I get topics or I get suggestions for topics. But very often I get them from just scanning uh, questions that are sent to me directly and co topics that are covered in either my um, blog, go, um, CaseyDurango.com, my Facebook page, Go Keto with Casey, but a lot of them come from the group I started, Keto After 40 and Beyond. Um, and, and one this morning that got a lot of comments, and and, and I think people – really are confused. Um, I am not the answer for this. I can tell you my understanding of the science. I have been fortunate to have access, even more so after the cruise, to the world experts on the topic of a well-formulated ketogenic diet. Um, and I ask probing questions. So I'm able to find out and I like to do research. And I'll tell you what's worked for me. A couple of topics that have come up. Um, how to get the fat in. Now, we've talked about this before. Getting in your fat. Don't know where the, oh, well, I do know where it came from. Getting your fat in. Someone said, I'm struggling. I, it's hard for me to get in my, the amount of fat I'm supposed to get in without overeating protein, which I'm not supposed to overeat. And I'm really confused. It is confusing. Um, as I wrote earlier this morning in a comment on the Keto After 40 and Beyond string about how to get that in, it is confusing, but I think some of that confusion is self-inflicted. I think we do it to ourselves. Here's what I would recommend. First of all, keep it really simple. And that's not just a cliche. This is a really simple nutrition protocol. Now, this thing about getting fat in has come from some misunderstanding of how the body gets into ketosis. The ketogenic diet, all that means is you are burning ketones for fuel rather than glucose for fuel. That's what that means. It's no more complicated than that. There can be different ways to get into ketosis actual true ketosis when your body is burning ketones, not when you're drinking them from a product. Whole other topic. Um, but that's all it means. Now, you could say, I'm doing my own version of keto, and I'm just doing kind of low carb, and I'm doing carb ups every now and again, and I'm losing weight, and I'm happy. That is fantastic. If you're happy, if something's working for you, um, that's great. And just just don't confuse if if you're not in ketosis you're not i mean that's then you're not a ketogenic diet that's and that's fine um again the world experts on this do not say this is the only way to achieve you know, achieve good health and and weight loss and fitness different body makeups different physiology different genetics can lead to different things i don't know why we think on this one thing that food, there should be an answer for everybody. We don't think there's an answer for clothing size, right? You're not going to try to squeeze your size eight feet into my size six pumps, right? My feet are 
small because I'm puny. You're not going to insist that I'm here in a tank top. You're not going to insist that I put on a jacket because you're cold. Correct? Even if we were sitting in the same room. Some people need four hours of sleep a night. Some need five, eight, some need ten. Why do we think, though, that we should all eat exactly the same amount? You know, making an allowance for gender, maybe, and height. No, I'm 5'1". I eat differently than many. 5'1", 59-year-old Caucasian postmenopausal women. Um, so there's that. So don't think that there's only one way to achieve good health and lose weight. Lots of folks love Weight Watchers and are successful. Lots of folks just go on calorie restriction and they're happy with it. Some people go to the gym six days a week and pound it out and, you know, do green smoothies. Fantastic. But if you're doing, if you're in ketosis, the way you do that is you reduce your carbs. So I'm, I'm going to loop this all back around. The way you do that is by reducing your carbs. It's not by upping your fat. Okay? So you don't have to eat fat to get into ketosis. If that was the case, then why, why would people who are fasting get into ketosis? They're eating zero fat. No, it's because of the absence of the carbs. It's not the presence of the fat. It's the absence of the carbs or the reduction of the carbs. You, you've reduced your carbohydrate intake to the level at which your liver is not pumping out glucose. That's what that is. So how do we get to this getting my fat in? Because somehow, the M word, does anyone know what I'm about to talk about? M word, M-A-C-R-O-S, macros, have become all important. If you enjoy following macros, if you, if you like the imposed structure, and it works for you, great. I never tracked macros ever, not once. You do not hear Dr. Eric Westman talking about macros. You hear Dr. Stephen Finney talking about macros, but as a result of research, not as a goal. It's just what happens on a well-formulated ketogenic diet, which means you keep your carbohydrate at a level at which your liver stops putting out glucose and you eat fatty sources of protein and you eat when hungry and stop when satiated. And the math works itself out. But if you are following these apps and calculators and forums and people who are saying you must do this, then you're going to feel like, well, I haven't gotten my fat in. Don't eat the fat if you're not hungry. Fat has calories. And if you're getting in that extra bit of fat, you may not be burning it for Mr. Tukas. So don't worry about it. Keep it simple. Again, I'm not here to tell you what to do, and you shouldn't listen to anyone that tells you what to do. We kind of know intuitively when we're hungry. I mean, hunger is a, is a tricky thing, but once you're kind of keto adapted, excuse me, I have to make sure, although Piper is gone, we are dog sitting two schnauzers. And then we are, um, Atticus is at the groomer right now. Uh, so I need to make sure that the schnauzers get out when they need to, Angus and Guinness. Um, If, you're, if, if you've been doing this for a little while, you've gotten over the cravings, you start to realize, man, I'm just not, I don't want to eat anything else. If you don't want to eat at the end of the day, don't eat. I've had people say, I'm having trouble getting my calories in. For goodness sake, don't do that. If you're not hungry, don't eat. Don't, don't let an app tell you what to eat. It's an app. It's not even a person. It's an app. But don't let another person tell you what to eat. Dr. Stephen Finney heard him say with my own ears at breakfast when we were th thrilled and honored, my husband and I, to, to have breakfast with him and his wife. Talking about, you know, because I was asking, well, why do you think people, you know, kind of hang on to these, these, these structures? What should I eat? How much should I weigh? How many calories should I have? How much protein should I eat? He says he doesn't know how much protein he eats, and he would.
You never tell anyone. And he has, you know, they see people in their clinic. They, he would never tell anyone how much they should, should weigh and how much they should eat. He says, I would only do that, tell another person that if they were my twin or my clone. And even then there might be a question. So keep it as simple as possible. Keep your grams of carbohydrate below 20. Some people can tolerate more. Some had to reduce it. But 20 is a, a pretty good threshold that should work for, for almost everybody. If you find you can eat more carbs, muzzle tough. Congratulations. Lots of times if you're younger, if you're a male, if you're a big person, you're a tall athlete, or if you're all of those things. If you're a six foot one female athlete who's 27 years old, off to the races you might be able to go with more carbs than me. Miss Shrimp, um, you know, who when I get my steps in every day, and that's my big accomplishment. Excuse me, I'm drinking um hot bouillon with some cayenne pepper and ginger, hoping to break up some congestion. So there we go. Um, that so bottom line, don't try to get fat in. The, the, the macros that, that were a result of research when they studied people who were able to self-feed in a metabolic ward, that means they were in food jail, the food was provided for them, and they couldn't go out to, you know, 7-Eleven and get a Slurpee. The food was provided for them, and they did, you know, here's the low-fat people, here's the low-carb people, here's the different varieties, and they allowed people to eat to satiety and get their exercise in that they wanted. They found out that the people on the low carb, when they did it, those were kind of how the macros came out, but they weren't trying to, to do that. It was a result, not a goal, okay? When I look at my food, because all I track are carbs, it's all I've ever paid attention to, the result, almost exclusively, falls out to this standard classic, we all know the, the macro chart, um, but not because I was, it, it's, it's as a result, not as a goal. It just, it just works if you just keep it simple. Um, I'm going to take a little commercial break here because I do want to let people know. Just got in shipments of the big 15-ounce mugs. They're back in. And then we got some, the little sister, which is an 11-and-a-half-ounce uh, mug. Those are available on kcdurango.com. And this is a stemless wine glass. I don't know if you can read this. I don't know if it shows up backwards or not. It says, all I want to do is drink wine and talk about keto. <laughs> it is glass. I would probably hand wash it. It has some etching on it. That's on the website as well. And then a refrigerator magnet that reads, are you here out of hunger or habit? And if hunger is not your problem, food is not the answer. How about that? Uh, these won't stick on a stainless steel fridge, but I think they make little things you can, little gummy things you can do. Anyway, those are all on the website. And my patrons at patreon.com will be getting some of these. And thank you for your patience. I really did need to wait for the next shipment to come in. So there's my little commercial. Thanks, guys. Um, and, and oh, and a change on my website for the thing. I just went ahead and I think I've done this correctly. I've just priced it with shipping included. It got to be very confusing with the different sizes and weights. Um, so I've just made a price and I hope I did it correctly. So whatever the price is, include shipping. Thanks. Um, all right, now I'm going to look at some of my comments and see what we've got going here. And I do have another topic coming up about losing slowly. I love the wine glass. I love the magnet. Oh, and thank you. To my friends at campusmarketing.com. Fantastic service. Thank you so much. Campusmarketing.com. They are not a sponsor, but they are a friend of the show, as they say. Um, that's the uh, farmer Mima, yes. Macro is the M word. <laughs> um, Kim Hoover, hello. I love this. I intermittent fast and eat one meal and maybe a snack. I was asked if I'm getting enough calories. Haha, ha, the group is all doing a three-day fast. How can they question my calories? People be crazy. Okay. There's cognitive 
dissonance. People can ignore certain facts and embrace others that are, uh, it's weird, but good. I'm glad you, you're enjoying that. Um, and I, I'm sorry, just running nose. There's just nothing I can do about it. Um, I asked at dinner, I'm, I'm telling you, if you didn't see my, my live the other day describing my cruise, talk about privilege. Almost every evening, my husband and I were seated at the formal dining on the cruise with Dr. Eric Westman, Dr. Uh, Dr. Nurse Jackie Eberstein, who if you don't know, uh, is the thread all the way back to Dr. Robert Atkins and her wonderful husband. And we, God, I learned so much. And, and they were very generous, even at dinner. I would just ask questions because people had asked me to ask questions. So the question came up, you know, if you're, can you be under eating calories and that impedes your weight loss? No, no, no. You know, there is, there will be metabolic shift downward as you lose weight on any eating protocol and as you age. It just happens, which is one reason when we got back from the cruise, uh, some days I ate 563 calories. Not that I track calories, but people ask that I, Log my food on my fitness pal. So I did. I did that a couple of days in a row. I just wasn't hungry. As of today, I've not this I've had my coffee and I've had my bouillon. And I'm fine. So no, there's no scientific evidence. There's no medical reason that upping your calories would make you lose weight. It's illogical, I think is essentially what I was told. Same thing with carving up. You know, people say, well, it shocks your system. Well, I say, well, you know, stabbing yourself in the thigh with a steak knife is a shock to your system. I'm not sure it's going to help you lose weight, my opinion. That was not a medical <laughs> response from these professionals. Let's go back to some questions. You know, Grandma, I, I want to tell you, I find the intermittent fasting thing a little bit of a... If the, if, again, if that structure works for you, I just eat when I'm hungry. And that has got me down to about a meal a day. But I'm not doing it because I'm focused on not eating if I am hungry. If I'm truly hungry, empty, need some food, want some food, I'm going to eat some food. I don't care whether it's at 7 a.m. or that doesn't happen until 7 p.m. or whether it happens three times that day. I don't think we're the same every day. I don't think our energy needs are the same every day. In my opinion, this is just my opinion, arbitrarily not eating if you're absolutely hungry and you have the energy needs makes no more sense than arbitrarily eating when you're not hungry just because someone said breakfast is the most important meal of the day or you must eat every two hours or you should eat three meals a day and two snacks. So that's my take on that. That's just, that's just this, this person's opinion. Uh, might, might make you go to the fridge slower if you had a stab. <laughs> like, yes, true, that might help with your uh, weight if you could not drag yourself across the floor. Although some of us might still try. Um, Sonia Nyberg, lost 68 pounds since November, off of all pain meds, off metformin, and all of the symptomatic drugs for multiple sclerosis Holy crap. Off of meds for MS? Wow. Brain fog is gone and inflammation is under control. I feel great. You can leave off the first part of that statement about losing 68 pounds since November and call the rest of it a victory. Excuse me, I just shifted my camera because my lovely mate's coming and going. Sorry about that. Um, that is amazing. Thank you for sharing that. Grandma Liz's kisses. I have a cheat day once a month. I go back into ketosis quickly. That I'm glad that works for you. Hey, Kim. If Casey sees the comment, she will say the same. I'm not sure what you're responding to, but uh, hey, Kim, thank you for chiming in from Germany. Pam, hey. Shelly, I feel like my craving for sweets is just gone. Not appealing at all. People, many people are really hesitant 
to start this because they say, well, I'm addicted to sugar. I can never give it up. Um, and I, I know that's a common thing. Here, again, my opinion, we're all addicted to sugar. We're all, addic we're all addicted to carbs. You know, there's sugar and there's potatoes and there's rice and there's bagels and there's bran muffins and there. That's all sugar. Um, it's all sugar. And we're all addicted to it. We're not addicted like with a, with a mental disorder. And I, I don't want to call addiction a mental disorder. We're all wired to be addicted to it for evolutionary purposes. If we're eating carbs, our, our 70 million year old species that has been eating essentially fat and protein for 70 million less 10,000 years, which is a whole bunch of millions, it must have said, why are you eating uh, leaves and berries and stuff? There must not be a good source of fat and protein right now. You know, the mastodon must be, you know, hibernating somewhere and you can't find one or the, you know, the wildebeest, whatever. So since you, you're, you're doing this because who would be eating leaves and berries when you can be eating mastodon? Eat as much as you can. There must be a problem. And then when you get back to eating the wildebeest or the mastodon or the sloth or whatever you're going to eat, then we can um, go back to the way it was. But in the meantime, I want you to eat as much as possible. So that happens, your liver puts put out the glucose for energy, and your pancreas, our pancreas shot out insulin to make sure our blood sugar didn't get too high, but it also blocked leptin, which is the hormone that tells your brain you've had enough to eat, because it wanted you to keep eating, because it said, you must be eating this low nutrient dense food because you don't have a better option. So you better just pile on, you better storehouse it. So eat as much as you can, and then we'll wait for the wildebeest. So when you eat, even as modern day people, we're eating carbs, pancreas sends out insulin, insulin takes the glucose out of the blood, stores it in the body cells for fat for later use, and blocks leptin. So our brain doesn't get the message, we've had enough popcorn, we've had enough pasta, we've had enough already, of the Oreos. We have had enough French fries. But it but there's a reason we can only eat three hard boiled eggs in a glass of water. There's a reason for that. We're all addicted to sugar. We're all addicted to carbs. So it's great when someone says, I never thought I could do this. I'm addicted. I can never give it up. And then they, they're able to get through a couple of weeks and they say, I'm not only not craving them, I don't even want those things. And then you get to the point where they look kind of gross to you. Okie dokie. Um, I can see some conversations going on. I'm going to go on to the next topic. This comes up a lot. Actually, with a coaching client I spoke with yesterday, I don't know if you're listening, I will not call out your name because that is privileged. But I get asked this a lot. And it comes up a lot. I've only lost fill in the blank pounds in the last fill in the blank weeks or months. Why is everyone else seem to be losing so fast and I'm slow? You know, there's almost mythology around the ketogenic diet that you start doing this, you know, you give up the carbs and in two weeks you will have lost 15 pounds doesn't necessarily work that way. It might work that way for some people. If there are any gentlemen in the audience, you know who you are. You tend to lose faster. We love you anyway. But it can be really irritating. Um, if you're younger, it can happen, you know, you can lose faster. If you have a lot to lose, people can lose faster. So, Keep in mind that speed is not the goal here. And if you find yourself struggling with the rate of your weight loss, quit focusing on the weight loss. Now, I know that's easy to say. And I'm somebody who weighs every day, every day. Didn't weigh on the cruise, of course, but I weigh every day and have done since January, uh, December 18, 2000, way back in the bad old days of the standard American diet. 
But think about this, ask yourself this question, these questions. Do my joints not hurt now? Um, am I not experiencing an afternoon slump at 2.30 or 3 like I used to? Do I now not feel like I need to take a nap? Am I not moody? Am I finding my mood stabilized? Uh, do, do I find it easier to stand up off the sofa instead of standing up off the sofa and going, oh, and then kind of hobbling through the kitchen? Are your jeans, shirts, fitting looser? If, if you answer to one of those things, that's a good thing. And if you've only lost deep, 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 deep pounds in deep, 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 deep months or weeks, focus on the word lost. You have lost weight. How many of us have said, if I could just lose five pounds, I'd be so happy. But then we get... We get excited, and then we say, I've only lost 12 pounds in the last two months. Well, that's six pounds a month. That's one and a half pounds a week. That's perfect. So I'm going to pull something up. I am going to, you won't be able to see this. I could show it to you, but then I'd have to kill you all if you saw how much I weighed. I wanted to pull this up. Weekly. I'm looking at my ginormous spreadsheet. So I'm going back to January 2014 when I started. So the first week I lost 8.1 pounds. Wow, marvelous. The next week, guess how much I lost? Go ahead, guess. Somebody take a guess. First week, 8.1 pounds. Second week, strictly keto, man, because I, I went into this and for some reason it clicked with me and it made sense and it was not a struggle at all. I lost 0.4 pounds the second week. Point four. Okay. Oh, please. The next week after that, 1.4 pounds. So it really slowed up after the first week. I mean, like super slow. The next week after that, 4.6. That was, that was great. Then 2.8, then 1.8, then half a pound, then 0.7 pounds, then 2.4, then 0.1 pounds. Then 4.7, then 0.4, then 1.7, then 0. Then 4.4. Then I went up 1.2 the next week, and then down 0.9 the next week, and then up 1.3 the next week, then down 3.4 the next week, then up 2.5 the next week. You get the drift. <gasps> Kim, thank you for the super chat. Thank you, thank you for the euro, 5 euro. Um, Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. And I'm going to come back. The, the super chat is pinned to the top, so I'll be able to, I'm going to finish my thought, and I'm going to come back to it. You get the point. I was a slow loser. I still am a slow loser. I am 10 and a half pounds lighter this morning than I was this day last year. So I've lost 10 and a half pounds in a year, y'all. And I'm not done. I'd like to lose more. Do I care? No. Would I have cared if I had not lost those 10 and a half pounds? No. Nope. Would I have cared if instead of 97.4 pounds, I'd only, only lost 75 pounds? No. Nope. From almost, almost the beginning, I felt so much better. I returned to the person I thought I used to be in my youth. Not in my 40s, not in my 30s, in my youth. I was, I, I found myself back. More confident. I, I still have issues with self-confidence. Um, and I still have issues with self-doubt. We all do. We're all vulnerable. Well, no, none of us are got it going on all the time, right? But I found my sense of optimism about myself. I've always been optimistic about the world. But anyway, I don't care. 
I just didn't want to take insulin for diabetes, y'all. That's all. That's all. I just didn't want to take insulin for diabetes. The rest of this has been gravy. And forget about having to take diabetes. My glucose at my last checkup was 66. And my A1C was 4.7. Okay. Kim, Casey, the comment before was about headaches and salt intake. I said up the salt to 5 grams of sodium, which is normally 12 grams of usual salt. Excellent. Sodium and Dr. Finney reiterated this. Um, when we were talking and during his, his, his speech, his talk, sodium is really important and most Americans get less than half than they probably need. Um, the recommendation is like 1.2 grams a day and he recommends five and some, I, think, I don't know if there's the American Heart Association, the American Dietetic Association recommends like 1.5. No. So Here's my bouillon, and I just use the Nor Cube because it's, you know, it's cheap, easy. I added another, I think it was a half a teaspoon of Diamond Brand Kosher Salt, and I threw in some cayenne pepper and some ginger and a little butter because um, it just tastes good and it feels good on my throat. Yeah, so that's excellent for migraines, for feeling kind of off balance. For paresthesia, which is pins and needles feeling in your um, fingers and toes, it can often be because of magnesium, and magnesium uh, can be rebalanced with sodium. They're all electrolytes, and they have positive and negative charges, and sodium is the king of them. Um, Farmer Mima, um, this diet has allowed me to stop obsessing over food. That is one of the most important things to me. Um, I've said it before. I might get a daggum t-shirt made that says food is not the boss of me or food is no longer the boss of me. And I do mean that sincerely. I now have become the person that I wanted, always prayed to be. I, I would lay in bed and pray. Please make me, I mean, this sounds sick. And, and I apologize to anyone who has suffered with eating disorders. Uh, because I, I do not mean this tritely. Please just make me anorexic. Please just make me anorexic. Please just make me anorexic. Which is a sick, sick wish. When I was first getting fat, I used to pray for cancer so that I could get thin. Well, guess what? It doesn't work that way. Found that out the hard way. Hmm. Those, that's how disordered your thinking becomes when you feel so desperately fat and out of control. And then I just wished I would be my, hey, Christine. Um, <laughs> Christine writes, I'm sorry to interrupt myself. I really want to lose more before I see my dreadful doctor in July. Don't worry about it, Christine. Your numbers are going to knock your dreadful doctor out of the water, and you're seeing a non-dreadful doctor soon, aren't you? So um, be happy with your loss, and loss is loss. So thank you. Um, I always used to think I was my father. My father was a big man all, all of his life. Uh, from the time he was in, um, I might sneeze, from the time he was in high school, through. Um, he was known as Jelly Belly. He was a big man. And I just always assumed I was my dad's girl. My mother, one of her sisters, was, named, was nicknamed Teensy. It was not an ironic name. She was about 4'11", and she weighed about 90 pounds. And my mother always said, you know, I just wish I was like Teensy. You know, she just never cared about food. My Aunt Teensy said that she'd be happy. To just, if they, someone would just come out with the pill that she could take once a day and not have to think about food anymore, she'd be thrilled. So I used to, <coughs> excuse me, I'm so sorry, wish that I was like my Aunt Teensy. Let me tell you what. I think I, after all these years, I'm, I'm not my dad's girl. Well, I might be with the gregarious attitude and the potty mouth. But I'm my Aunt Teensy underneath. I now eat saying, what can I eat so I don't have to think about eating anymore today? And that's where I am. 
and I am thrilled. It has freed up time, actual literal time, food purchasing, food preparation, food cleaning up. It has saved money. It has saved space in my brain for other things. It has saved refuse from going to the landfill. Um, it's an amazing thing. And I really do think I'm going to sneeze, and I apologize. I wish it would just come on out. Okay. I am now going. That Those were my, my two topics. If you're a slow loser, embrace it. Don't worry about it. And don't compare yourself to anyone else. You don't know where somebody started. I mean, some people may share their starting weight and their current weight. Some people may not start their share their starting weight, and it, it is more than yours. Or they might be younger, or they are have had less metabolic stress, or they're less insulin resistant. Don't measure yourself by anyone else. Just measure yourself by being better, feeling better. And shoot, what else are you going to do with the time? Um, I saw something. It was a good. It was a good thing on the keto after forty. It's like a, a meme. It said something about um, something to the effect of this process may be slow, but quitting won't speed it up. That's exactly right. So keep that in mind. Make your goal better health. Um, and, and don't equate the the better health with the fat loss. You know, we've been told if we're if we have medical issues, we've caused them by putting on body fat. I like to think that the body fat is yet another side effect of the nutrition. Some people are more susceptible to it than others. There are people who do not have much body fat and have high triglycerides and low HDL and bastante de LDL particles, lots and lots of small sticky LDL particles and have high blood pressure. And then there are people who have more body fat and those markers are better than the thin persons. Some people just have the, the added side effect of body fat from the nutrition and some don't. So um, try to stop thinking that if to get healthy, I have to lose all the body fat now. No, you don't. It's taken me almost three and a half years to lose 97.4 pounds. Do I give a crap? No. First year, I think it was 47 pounds, less than a pound a week. And then the second year it was much less than that. And then the third year was even less. And like I just said, this in the last year, it's been 10 and a half pounds since this day last year. Am I going to change? No. Am I discouraged? No. I'm thrilled. I was thrilled a year ago. I was thrilled two years ago. I was thrilled when I lost the first 25 pounds. I've been trying for 15 years to lose 10 pounds. Okay? In some years I went up. Many years I went up. Okay, lecture over. Let's look at some, uh, let's hear about you guys. Okay. Um, the, uh, hey, Grandma. Bye, Grandma Liz. Shelly writes, sometimes this is hard, but being 100 pounds overweight is harder. Yes, it is. Um, Danny Basquez, lost 34 pounds in four months on keto. Blood markers getting better, but high blood pressure is still ele elevated. Any thoughts? Dr. Westman says that it, with his patients, very often blood pressure medication is the last thing that he can get his patients off of. That's ending a sentence with a preposition, so sorry. Um, no, I don't have any thoughts because I am not a medical professional. Many people find their blood pressure improves, but for some reason he said it's just the last thing that, that gets adjusted. Um, Manuel Era, have, you, have I ever heard of rabbit starvation, a phenomenon observed in HPLF diets resulting in muscle loss? Don't know either what rabbit starvation is or what a oh high protein low fat yeah low fat 
you need moderate protein even to build muscle. So um, high protein is not necessarily, because then you're just piling on and making more glucose. Um, Shelly, I'm thrilled to feel better even though I have a long way to go. Kristen Clark, love that saying. Not sure which one that is, but maybe it's the food is not the boss of me. Nona Grace, I compared keto to saving money, slow and steady. There you go. Hey, Marion. I haven't heard in a while. So I'm losing here. 23 pounds down since last July. You're a happy girl. You know, somebody, I, I, I've shared this before. Someone kind of snarkily asked me how long it took me to lose the weight to that point. And that, I think I said at that point it was three years. And I said, three years. And she replied, wow, that's not much weight in that amount of time. So I did have to reply, well, how much weight have you lost in three years? <laughs> Snarky back. Um, can you heal insulin resistance? I am not a doctor. I don't know about healing it. But I know that I am probably less insulin resistant than I was. Why do I say that? And Dr. Finney has said, yes, that there might be some healing that goes along with this. I don't know that there have been any studies done. And most reputable doctors and researchers, they want, they want to see the studies. They want well-designed studies over a long period. You know, some people out here are barking out. They're just parroting. Some people are doctors, and they're just parroting other people's words, but they don't necessarily know the research, and maybe they're getting ahead of it. Uh, you don't want to get ahead of the research and say things like, like someone said, there was an article, and I actually think I deleted it off, off of Keto After 40. You know, keto, ketogenic diet shown to treat Alzheimer's, autism, cancers, and ADHD, I think. Come on now. Let's not, let's not play. Let's not get overly enthusiastic. We know that it is an extremely effective way to treat type 2 diabetes and that it has wonderful anti-inflammatory properties. But research needs to be done. And I like to follow people who follow the science. So as far as healing or, yeah, healing insulin resistance, Dr. Finney said there might be some evidence that once you, you kind of do heal, and it maybe would be a, you know, analogous to a broken bone. You know, it's very fragile. It's terrible until you get it set properly and it remits. Um, uh, but the mechanism is different, obviously, than a broken bone. So I don't know the answer to the question. I'll ask. I'll, we're, oh, oh, by the way, there's going to be another um, Vintage Girls. I'm going to tell you that um, Dr. Finney was asked about his opinions about fasting. And his response was, I will say this, I'm here as a guest of Jimmy Moore. And that was that. He had some concerns about the science that was cited in the book. That's all I'm going to say. Kim, thank you for the super chat. Oh, thank, no questions, just saying welcome back. Thank you so much, Kim. You're very supportive. I really appreciate it. Another swig of bullion. Um, I'm gonna. I've said all I'm gonna say. Vintage girls. Um, excuse me. Um, where was I? I beg your pardon. Can't recall. So if someone wants to tell me where I was talking, Josephine Trainer says, "Good day, Casey. Been sticking with keto for two weeks now, and have survived the keto flu. Yay! I'm so pleased." Um. Oh, and Kristen Clark writes the phrase that she likes is, if you quit, it won't speed up the process. That was brilliant, really. Um, Pam Kirk asks, Supp supplements that, that you take on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm a very firm believer that this way of eating requires nothing as far as keto supplements. I take a multivitamin. So does my husband. I take three slow-release magnesium tablets. Um, the brand I use are... Mag 64 from Amazon. Uh, I'll put a link later on underneath. We take fish oil. 
And Jackie Eberstein talking at, um, at, at the talk said that probably most people need vitamin D. And that's not just because you're on the ketogenic diet. Most people in general need vitamin D. <coughs> Excuse me. It's just, she says, even if you live in a sunny climate, we slather ourselves up with sunblock. So it's blocking the vitamin D very often. But m many people just don't get enough actual sun. Excuse me, my nose. Um, oh, sorry, Kim. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Sorry, Kim. I dropped my microphone. Is that better? Thank you for letting me know. It, it actually dropped down. I need to replace my microphone. It broke and it keeps slipping. Sorry about that, guys. Um, uh, Josephine Trainer, I'm sorry if you already answered this. What exercise did you start out with? Zero exercise. Exercise is not required. It's not even recommended necessarily at the beginning. Hey, Shelly, thank you for the super chat. Um, and if you're particularly heavy, as I was, it's not recommended. It can you know, be really tough to exercise a big fat body, a lot of pounding. But I've done no formal exercise. I, I keep promising and I've made a commitment to my patrons that I will be doing that. And then May was a month of things that happened, um, that things got away from me. And so June is, is it. I'm actually going to be joining a gym. But no, I feel more like running now, um, exercising because I'm lighter. It's easier for me to move through space. But no, I did not do any formal exercise. I do try to get my steps in on my Garmin 920 XT. And Shelly writes, thank you for your insights and knowledge. Thank you. Your page has been a life changer. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. This diet has changed my life in ways I cannot even begin to describe. And it has changed the lives of the life of my husband. Not because he was particularly overweight. He's always been rather fit. He put on a little bit of weight after age 50. But it, it's changed him. And it has greatly enhanced our relationship. And we've always had a very strong relationship. My husband loved me when I was super fat. Um, that was just not a, a non-issue for him. But... It is because I feel differently about myself. It is, we're, we're just having a lot of fun. Of course, it also helps that we're, you know, kids are all out. So that's, there are a lot of things that go on with that. It is a life changer. Um, Kelly Lawson, hi, Casey. I'm glad to, got to join in. Me too. Nona Cat writes, yesterday was 47 days until my 47th birthday. Going to do a mile walk every day until then. What a great goal. That's fantastic. Oh, thanks, Diane Gruber, for the $2 Super Chat. Um, thank you so much. A crazy mama, mommy of four. Good. God, I love you. Keto style. Thanks for being real. We need that. Thank you. I, I had three kids, and, and that, that was that's a lot to handle. Of course, I'm one of seven. I don't know how my mother did it. Tammy Gray writes, it takes a long time to show symptoms of low vitamin D. My doctor couldn't figure out why I was breaking out in hives every day. A1... One blood test, a one blood test later, a prescription, and I started getting better. Great. Yeah, um, Jackie said that almost everybody is probably a little deficient in vitamin D. Uh, Manuela, uh, going for a walk in the morning is enough. No need to stress the body if you don't feel like doing so. I totally agree. I want to do this now because I want some bone density, so I want to do some, um, you know, weight training, some resistance exercises. Um, <laughs> Kim, Kim, who is a patron, thank you, Kim, writes, don't worry about exercising challenge. We love you anyway. Thank you very much. Um, Laura, Laura, cannot find super chat. Uh, it's a dollar sign below the chat, and it, you may not see it. I don't know how it works on the other end. But if you look below the chats, there's like an emoticon, a little smiley face, and then there are dollar signs. That's how you do that. Um, Beverly Villabondo. Anyone else having problems buying the cup from the... Uh-oh. It just keeps processing. What? Sorry. I might have done something wrong, y'all. Again, self-taught. I tried to make it so it was just shipping included. Is it the big cup or the little cup? Let me know, Beverly. Because there's the two, support, uh, two separate ones. Tiger Lily Lynn, Super Chat is the great Darlison. Thank you. Um, okay, Denise Bamberg, not supported on iPhone. That explains that if you're on an iPhone. 
Okay. Ooh, got to the bottom where the the dregs of the bouillon cube and the spices have all sunk down. Very intense and delicious. Now, did anyone have holy moly, Daryl Lynn, ten dollar super chat? Thank you very much. You are you guys are great. Um, occasionally have a diet soda since starting my keto late February 17th. Noticed a sweet taste in my mouth for rest of day, and I and I can brush till forever and it won't go away. Have you heard of this before? So you you say you're actually tasting sweet in your mouth even though you have not eaten anything sweet? I don't know that I I know that I have not experienced that. Has anyone else experienced that? Is it an unpleasant sensation, Darlin? Interesting. Kim Hoover, I'm down from 170 to 140. I'm 53 years old and 5'3" Uh, five feet three inches tall. I feel healthy, healthier than ever. Also, I'm up to three miles walking every day. See, that's worth the price of admission, isn't it? Is that feeling like you feel better than you did in your 30s or your 40s? I feel better than I did in my late 20s. Frankly, I feel better than I did in my early 20s. I, one thing, I'm a lot smarter than I was in my early 20s. If any early 20 people were in here, sorry. You, you, you're pretty sure you're pretty smart, and you might be, but you're not. Um, there's a lot of life to learn, so listen listen to elders that you respect. Um, I feel better, for sure. I know I'm smarter. I feel like my energy is somehow purer. I mean, I had lots of energy, but it was kind of scattered. And now I have energy, and I'm focused, and it's great. Okay. Um, Daryl, and drink diet soda and it leaves sweet taste. Okay. I can't believe the energy. No more depression. In just three weeks, I was chronically depressed. Thank you for sharing that. Um, I was chronically depressed. And it was, that was impacting. Not my relationship with my husband, but it was so hard for him to see because there was, it was nothing he could do. Thanks, Daryl. You don't have to come back. It's after a diet soda and unpleasant. So after a diet soda, you have this unpleasant sweet taste in your mouth. Maybe somebody else can speak to that. That's interesting. I had not heard of that. I wonder, Daryl, is that the only sweet stuff you have, like a diet soda? Do you put sweetener in your coffee? Do you, you eat anything else that, you know, even if it's artificially sweetened? Has um, has that effect on you, or is is it only diet sodas that you're consuming anyway? That's very interesting. I wonder if um, uh, you know, I would I would kind of listen to my body, and if my mouth was telling me, Ugh, I don't like this, maybe you go to you know mineral water, try some Pellegrino with some lime in it, and see if you. If that avoids that sweet sensation, and also you just find, I don't need the diet soda. And that can be one more tweak. That can be one more purification, if you will. And I'll tell you, we use artificial sweeteners in this house. Uh, we use Splenda in our coffee, or I use Jordan brand skinny salted caramel syrup in my coffee sometimes. Um, my husband likes almond cookies, which he can tolerate, and we use Splenda for that. And I like Coke Zero. We drink Crystal Light, but it's not, uh, it's nothing that impacts us negatively. And we don't mind, and if, we, if there's an aftertaste, it's, we're, we're immune to it or we're taste bud blind to it. Um, so, you know, let's, let, maybe do some experimenting. Tammy Smith writes, first time in my life someone asked me, how much weight have you lost now? And I responded, you know what? I don't know, the scale and food no longer control my life. Brava, brava, brava. Sarah Leland, I would just stop drinking the diet soda. Yeah, give that a try. See, make an experiment. I've heard of people getting a metal-like taste as a result of keto. I've heard that as well, and I think I might have experienced that at the very beginning. I don't have it now. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm so sorry. Um, diet soda tastes like poo now. Thank you, Rosalba. We can always count on you to tell it like it is, hermana. 
Karen Murdoch writes, try La Croix sparkling water. Comes in several flavors. I love the orange. Good tip. Shelly, Google this phrase. Can aspartame leave a sweet taste in your mouth for a long time? Good tip. Uh, Daryl, yep, Splenda in coffee and Swerver Sucrin for cooking if ever needed, but only the diet soda. Interesting. Yeah, I think you need to experiment and, and report back to us. Um, isn't that interesting that Shauna writes, I had a strawberry the other day and the sweetness almost knocked me over just from a strawberry. Hmm. Um, yeah, Daryl, everyone's laughing at Rosalba Trujillo. Um, okay, I am going to start winding up. Any other questions, points, uh, any victories one wants to share, any um, challenges? Um, I, oh, let me, let me uh, do say this. Monday, I didn't do my Monday morning chat at the same time as usual. We were still having kind of jet lag and reentry. Plus, was sick. And this morning, I had an appointment at 9 o'clock. So I pushed this back. But I have gotten feedback that a lot of people like the little bit later time. So I'm, I'm probably going to, as I continue to do live events, we'll push them a little bit later in the morning. So let's count on Monday morning being more like 11 o'clock for a live. And um, I will be working on some old school videos. It's just um, things have gotten happily very busy. Um, and for any patrons online, uh, I've already sent this message out that the, the private live event I'll be setting a couple of those, a couple, three of those up over the month of June at different times and days to try to get everyone. I'm excited to say that I have patrons from Germany, Kim, uh, and one other, and uh, several in the UK and New Zealand, many in Australia, lots in Canada. Um, do I have one in Hong Kong? And of course, scattered all over the United States. I'm really tickled and thrilled with the honor. So I'll try to coordinate that. And then uh, our, our group video chats will be scheduled as well. More info on that. So thanks a lot. Okay, a reminder again. Now someone has said, I hope the, I hope the website's okay. Big mugs in, little mug, a little bit less expensive, less heavy. Um, and this little, the stemless wine glass. To give you a perspective, the wine glass is like, this is the big mug. All I want to do is drink wine and talk about keto. A little novelty. And fridge magnet. Uh, again, you don't have to buy anything to be successful on keto. These will not help you be more successful on keto. They're just novelties and people seem to like them, so I really appreciate the opportunity to provide them. And again, thank you to the wonderful people at campusmarketing.com. Um, they are not a sponsor, but they are um, great to work with. Um, uh, Christine Hirschfeld, please bring the little mugs to the meetup. Oh, I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought earlier. That was the, what I was going to talk about. Tuesday, June 6th, and you can see the invites to them on Go Keto with KC Facebook page, Keto After 40 and Beyond Facebook page, and on the Low Carb Support Group page. The easiest one to find will be Go Keto with KC Facebook page. The monthly support group meeting with Dr. Eric Westman. He will start talking at about 6.30 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time and talk till about 8 p.m. I don't know that I'm going to stream it again. I will be really frank with you. I got some negative feedback about it when I, I just tried it as a, as a last minute thing. So I'm not sure I'm gonna do that again. I'll see. I might film it, uh, record it, with my camera and then provide it to the patrons or edit it and provide some to y'all and some, I don't know what I'm going to do. Uh, I don't want to put out content that people want to complain about, you know, that's counterproductive for everyone. And they said the sound quality was poor and they said I talk too much, um, which, you know, I can, I can take that. Um, maybe I do. So, but if you want to attend, if you're anywhere near Durham, North Carolina, June 6th, um, there is a keto friendly buffet pro provided. It's about $18. You don't have to eat to stay there. You can just come and not spend a penny and listen to Dr. Eric Westman and me. I moderate for him, but he's the one who knows all the answers. And uh, that'd be great. It'd be great to see you. So 
Thanks a lot, you guys. I really appreciate it. Thank you for all your super chats. That really means a lot. Thank you for showing up and asking questions. Thank you for sharing your story, your stories, your successes. Thank you for being transparent in your challenges. I think that helps everyone. It helps me. I have my challenges too, you know. We all struggle sometimes, so thank you very much. Everyone have a fantastic weekend. Uh, Christine, your feed for the support group is what got us going. Oh, thanks, Christine. That's actually good to know. Thank you. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll see what I can work on. Maybe I'll just, I'll just try to make it better. Thank you, guys. I really appreciate it. Have a great, great weekend. Keep it in the road, y'all. Remember, keep your grams of carbs below 20. Total, not net. Eat fatty sources of protein. Eat only when you're hungry. Don't let food be the boss of you. And be kind to yourselves. Okay? Don't judge yourself too harshly. We've wasted enough time doing that, y'all. Don't judge yourself harshly. Peace.